Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful 8th of August, 2023. Coming up in this Tuesday's rant of the Crusty Connect podcast. That's right. Sophie and GT separation or impending divorce. Pink shirts and more Barbie BS. Privacy and contradictions. I mean, I tell you, what is the world coming to? Well, you can say that again. Anyhow, stick around. Uh, some vulgar language, and I smoke cigarettes. You know, listener, view discretion is advised. Uh, see you in a bit. Cheers. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast, a Canadian veteran's point of view on political, social, economic issues, and life. Here's Krusty. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 221 of the Tuesday Rant on the Krusty Connect Podcast. That's right, Sophie and JT's divorce, pink shirts, privacy, and contradictions. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Krusty Canuck, on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon. Yes, yes, yes. So like the title called says, there's an impending divorce between our Prime Minister and his loving wife, Sophie Gregoire Trudeau. I guess they got married back in 2005 to a blissfully wonderful engagement and wedding ceremony. And of course, we actually look at some of the old wedding photos from the Justin Trudeau uh, clan and entourage. A few of those familiar faces, you know, that actually got elected in the last you know, federal election. Anyway, I, I, enough of this crap. Uh, just like what I said, who the hell cares? Honestly, who really cares? I mean, if you like and hear what you see, ladies and gentlemen, please click like and subscribe. Share this content all over your social media platforms, too. Uh, I'm going to start loading the videos of my Podbean account there as well, you know. So that way, uh, thank you. Thank you. That way, my fans in the United States can uh, see the videos, too. I, I, I find I get more downloads from my Podbean app when they actually see the video rather than just the podcast. So I'm going to start doing that. Load it all one big lump sum so you can see my wonderful mug, my wonderful Canadiana mug here. as I explain Canadian politics to the whole world. Yes, that's right. So anyway, carry on with uh, Tuesday rant. Yeah, Sophie JT, separation or divorce. Now, personally, I don't care. I am a child of divorce, ladies and gentlemen. I am a child of divorce. It happened many moons ago, so I'm not worried about it. And regardless of how painful and confusing it can be for any young boy or young girl, okay, you overcome it. Now, I've seen rants and raves all over the Twitter feed, all over some so other social media feeds in regards to Justin's privacy and Sophie's privacy and all that good stuff. But here's a question, though. Here's a here's a few questions in regards to that. Now, how was privacy looked after? How was our privacy looked after? How were people's privacy looked after during the convoy? Okay, something to think about there. How many people had their bank account information displayed for certain officials and government officials to see in the name of safety? Okay. How many people had their bank accounts frozen? because of projection, because of conjection, because of false assumptions in the name of safety. Because certain people were deemed as terrorists or certain people were deemed as oh, ruffians and miscreants and all that good stuff and all those big fancy fucking legal bud words. When it came down to the simple fact that there were people that gave $20, $50, $100, a few here and there, a few in there, in support of this convoy, okay? How many of those people's privacies were violated in the name of safety? Now, to all the Twitter uh, fools out there that have backed up Justin Trudeau and all of his claims about prosperity and democracy and getting the credit rating up and where our inflation is super low, let us remind those individuals, too, that gasoline is still up, home heating and cooling is still up, and groceries and everything we take for granted in our daily lives is up, too. So no matter how much you want to butter that poop sandwich and call it a croissant, it's still a fucking poop sandwich, eh? right? Now, I'm not going to sit here and do the whole he said, she said. There's probably problems that are happening with the Trudeaus well before he got into politics. You look at the history of Pierre Elliott Trudeau before he married uh, Margaret. 
Okay. What kind of guy was he? Apparently he married, or he didn't marry, he dated Barbara Streisand for the better part of a year or two years, I think. So Bab Streisand, okay, was actually with a Canadian politician back in the late 60s. Self-explanatory. Who knows, swinging 60s, what was going on behind closed doors then. But then again, it wasn't really made public either. Now, I personally don't care what happens to uh, Justin Trudeau. I don't. Because I have lost a lot of respect. Well, sorry, to be blunt, I have no respect for the Liberal brand right now. Because the Liberal Party of Canada has done more to hurt itself and hurt this country than than ever. Right? And regardless of how you dress up the the economic outlook and how they fail to pay attention to monetary policy, they have put us into debt. They've embarrassed us and our NATO allies. They've embarrassed the working class Canadian. They've thrown Canadians in jail because of mischief, right? And they've lied to us on a daily basis, okay? Now, this whole thing that's going on with Meta and going on with Google, the whole... <laughs> <laughs> the whole wish-wash and BS of Bill's C-11, C-18, and C-36, okay, what have they promoted other than uh, more and more people have to pay their fair share? What exactly is the fair share you're looking for? Because back in 2021, before the last federal election, the Liberal Party of Canada under Justin Trudeau and his little cronies of know it all gave... The mainstream media, roughly $595 million. So let's round it off to about $600 million bucks to keep certain programs and certain affiliates afloat, okay? Now, my good friends at Northern Perspective has, has said and put this out in the recent videos. 20 years ago, the mainstream media in this country was warned about online activity, meaning that people are going to go more online. They're not going to go buy so many papers. They're not going to buy so many magazines. They're not going to buy this, buy that, buy the actual copies of newsprint that we used to see as kids. They're just going to go online and see it. So they better adjust and modernize to keep it into the game. So when it comes to this whole uh, Google and Meta have to pay their fair share, what exactly is their fair share? And I'm going to use uh, Fox's example <laughs> from her video. It was just, it, it's common sense, really. That'd be like me writing an article or writing a book, okay? going to Canada Post and then mailing it out to my family and friends and whoever else is on my mailing list and then demanding Canada Post pay me for that. Right? That's the government's logic. Now, to you media moguls out there who happen to be watching this podcast, which I doubt, you know, uh, to these individuals that expect something for nothing, wake the fuck up. Okay? Now, regardless of all the censorship that's been going on, with the bigger tech firms and the smaller tech firms and now the bigger governments and the smaller governments, okay? Head out of ass and focus on what's real, okay? All this squabbling about people paying their fair share, I'd like to know exactly what you're paying, right? What fair share are you paying, okay? To all the squawkers and whiners out there, what exactly are you paying? Or you expect to get paid for nothing? Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. We're back with uh, Tuesday Rant, ladies and gentlemen, episode 221. Sophie and JT separation, divorce, pink shirts, and more Barbie BS, privacy and contradictions. Anyway, carrying on the whole divorce thing. Uh, who cares? Who cares? You know, people get married, people get divorced. Okay, I'm a firm believer that if you're going to get married the first time, you do your damnedest beyond your college tribe, above and beyond for your partner, regardless of how many flaws you have, how many flaws she has, or he has, or they have, or whatever abbreviation uh, you want to use. Okay, I married my wife for a very good reason, because I believe in her. Right? She's got the best fucking heart that any woman can carry. She's so loving. She's so caring. And when she's pissed off, she knows what she's pissed off about. When she's mad, she knows what she's mad about. She doesn't speculate. She doesn't over-dramatize. She doesn't lie to people. She treats people good. She treats people very well. 
Okay? And that's one of the reasons why I love her. And there's times where I've made mistakes. There's times where she's made mistakes. But guess what? We're still here. We're still giving it a go. Why? Because we believe in each other. We both come from a blue collar background. We've had our knocks given to us and we've had our victories earned. So she's a keeper. And I also find with certain marriages today that there's a giant list of expectations every time somebody gets married and what they expect to do or expect to have. You got to work at it. That's what you got to do. And it's not about money. It's not about mind-blowing orgasmic sex. It's about getting along and working together as a team, as a couple, as friends. We don't see a lot of that. <coughs> we don't see a lot of, of people uh, putting emphasis on the friendship part or building that foundation. We see expectations. Now, regardless of what goes behind closed doors of uh, Joseph or Justin, whatever his name is, I just I lost control. The man's just... Bleh, bleh. Anyhow, who cares? Honestly, who cares? Because if the man can't handle his marriage, how can he really handle the country? But then the proof is in the pudding too. How has he handled things in this country on a national and global effort? Hasn't done too well, has he? You know... Um, <laughs> he's lied to the Canadian populace um, how much money was his wife being paid from the Wee Foundation for speaking engagements now I'm sure maybe Sophie's a nice lady in her own right too but they both come from a spoon fed culture where everything has been given to them handed to them privately educated you know, privately tutored privately pleasured who knows what goes behind the closed doors of some of these elite officials but who the fuck cares Okay. Now, all these individuals that are holding on to their pearl thing, you just leave Justin alone and respect his privacy. I'll remind them again. How did the federal government respect people's privacy when it came to the convoy? The jibby jabs, the mandates, right? How about those 300 troops that were dismissed from the military because they refused the jibby jabs? How was their privacy respected? And yet you have the goddamn audacity to what the prime minister's feelings, especially when that man and probably his wife didn't really give two shits about our feelings. Hmm. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen. If you like and hear what you see, please click like, subscribe, share this content, all of your social media platforms too. You can also find the podcast on Podbean, Rumble, Spotify, Amazon, Grow Ready UK, and Player FM too. Like I said, from now on, I'm going to start loading this podcast, the videos and all, on all my podcast channels. So if you like and hear what you see, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, give me a comment or two, and subscribe if you can, right? So if I run you guys too, you're all wonderful out there. Especially my new American listeners, too. You guys rock. You guys are awesome. Anyway, carrying on again with this episode. So, <laughs> I'm just, I, I I don't care. Honestly, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care who gets divorced, who gets married. If you get divorced because you have a partner that cheats on you, then you kick her ass or kick his ass to the curb. Whatever. Okay? The trick is, is not to be vindictive or to be jealous. Yeah, it sucks. I've had my heart broken. You've had your heart broken. I've been dumped before. I know what it feels like. And I've actually had partners cheat on me before too, right? So I know what it feels like when you get that knife in the gut and that churning and that insensitive response to the pain. But when you meet somebody like my wife, she can give you a hand. And I've given her a hand too. So back and forth. And the only thing <laughs> that's in our way is, is ourselves. But we're going to make a go of it. We want to get it right th this time. We don't want to have to wait another 15 years or 16 years or 20 years. We want to get it right now. So that's what we do. Yeah, enough of this drama here, too. So pink shirts and more Barbie BS, privacy and contradictions after I've talked about that divorce. So pink shirt issue, too. There's a big stink on, on Twitter about Justin taking his son to the Barbie movie. They're wearing pink shirts, and they say Team Barbie. Well, who cares? Honestly. Who really cares? 
does it really matter if the old man wants to take his son to a flick? Now, I personally wouldn't take my nephew to see Barbie. I'd sooner take my nephew to see Sound of Freedom or, uh, you know, something a little more substantial. <laughs> uh, I, I don't want a whole woke story based on a toy company or a toy line that was, that's been famous for the past 60 years. Who the fuck cares? Hey, eh? honestly, who the fuck cares? Who cares about the whole Barbie franchise, whatever? It made Mattel a lot of money, put Mattel on the map in the toy market, but I don't care. Who cares if Justin took his kid to a movie? But if you're going to sit there and say respect the Prime Minister's privacy, then why is the Prime Minister showing a picture of him and his son going to see Barbie? You know, I just, I, I don't know. You decide. But I just, who cares? Right? Who cares about pink shirts? I personally don't like the color pink on myself. Not a big pink fan. But I think pink looks adorable on, on certain ladies. Looks good on little, little kids. It's like, oh, that's cute. That's adorable. Oh, it's not just nice. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. But I personally don't like pink. But I don't care who does or who doesn't. And the people out there that are you're constantly twittering and commenting on it, get a life. <laughs> who the fuck cares? Honestly, who cares? If that's your biggest concern, based on what's going on in this country right now with carbon taxes, and all these people that are talking about climate emergencies and all this, oh my God, where the world's going to die. All you fucking worry about is a guy wearing a pink shirt or the prime minister taking his kid out to a movie. Who cares? Who cares? I have no intention whatsoever to take my wife to see Barbie. And she's never even asked about it. <laughs> she doesn't look too impressed about it. But who cares? Honestly, there are other things in this country to worry about that are going on right under our noses here. Rather than worry about the Prime Minister taking a thought to a good movie. <laughs> Who the fuck cares? Honestly, I mean, really. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. Anyhow, moving on from the whole Barbie BS. It's just, when you look at all these movies that are coming out that are winning hearts and minds, you have to keep in mind the whole what they call the paradigm programming, where they instill values into you as you watch and eat your candy and drink your soda or pop. I go, oh, what a great movie. And you're getting these little messages here, too. Now, from what I've understood about the whole Barbie movie, it's about a whole woke mandate where, you know, the patriarchy is so evil. And we got to stop the patriarchy over. Like, come on. Come on. Enough enough of the patriarchy bs okay no one's denying any women a job no one's denying any woman the opportunity to go and to aim high to the best of her ability it all comes down to choices and how you choose okay it's that simple and a part being an adult is you accept the decisions you make and you accept the actions you have taken or not taken in your life and you do what you possibly can to make it better for yourself and if you got friends that can back you up, all the fucking power to you. So I'm going to leave that Barbie thing alone. I just, I honestly, folks, I really don't give a shit about the whole, uh, about the whole <laughs> the concept of the woke mandates. Regardless of how much money that, that movie has made, I'm just, I, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Ah, now that's off my chest. Okay. Carrying on anyway with the, uh, the Tuesday rant episode 221. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You know, privacy and contradictions. So like I mentioned earlier about the whole privacy thing too. Now, with all these bills that have come to surface in the name of democracy and protecting the little guy and being free, do you honestly think that the federal government is really, really going to respect our privacy after I just mentioned about the convoy? If they have the power to look at your bank accounts and dictate what you owe and how much you should pay and how much they can freeze on you, do they really give a shit about your privacy? To give a shit about my privacy or anyone's privacy for that matter, right? So as I say again, if the prime minister is willing to promote him and his son going out to a movie and put it online, he's not too upset about his own privacy now, is he? No, because he has a lot of handlers and backbenchers and slap and tecklers, you know, slap and tickle for your pickle <laughs> that will look after his sorry ass if anything happens. So. When it comes down to it, again, who cares? But what I care about is that my wife's privacy is looked after, mine, yours. Now, everybody out there in the Krusty Canuck fan base world, everybody out there on the internet has your privacy looked after. 
and we pay some good money for decent services to do that. Now, if the federal government can take it upon themselves to raid your bank account, how else can they raid right here? Right? Are they looking at me right now through my camera? Right? I've had some phishing attempts. I've had some hack attempts, but luckily I put the thumb on them pretty quickly. But needless to say, ladies and gentlemen, it puts something in perspective. It gives you something to think about. Right? As far as I'm concerned, we all have a right to privacy. We all have a right to express ourselves accordingly without hitting people and taking their stuff. Right? Basic liberty at its finest. You know, fight the power that's overwhelming, but treat people with respect and courtesy and dignity to the best of your ability. Right? I believe in democracy and freedom for all. Right? However you want to live your life. I don't care if you're gay. I don't care if you're straight. I don't care if you're bi or tri or pansexual. I still fucking hate that term, pansexual. Why don't you just say you're bi? You like it both ways. Like Burger King, right? You like it both ways. Ho, ho, ho. Without having to get all fancy and because you're some kind of nouveau critique or something new and chic and brave. You like it both ways. Shit simple. Right? But I don't care what color you are. I don't care what your religion is. I don't care how you praise whatever God. I don't care what you worship, what you what you do. Just don't hit people and take their stuff. That includes their jobs. That includes their relationships. That includes their online presence, too, if they have any. Or if they want to go out in the online world and say, hello, like I am. Oh, go figure, right? Interesting. All right? But just keep it simple. Life can be simple. And I, mean, I don't mean simple like as in, so I can't figure this out for myself. I mean simple as in where it's not a chore and you're not stressing out every day of the week. Okay? Treat people the way you want to be treated. It's that simple. Oh, I said that again. You know what I mean? There. Exactly. <laughs> I said that again. But when we see all of this bantering over a, a shirt or a fucking movie, okay, we're missing the point that we have leaders in this country They've taken the summer off and they're bragging about a, a lower deficit or a lower inflation rate. Yet there's still people out of work, people still struggling to get groceries, people still struggling all together, all because of these leaders' decisions. And yet the people that back up these leaders, they obviously are not struggling themselves, or they're telling themselves, Well, I voted for this guy and I really, really like him, but you know, I'm having a hard time paying my bills this month. Just go along to get along, right? The Canadian arrogance at its finest. We'll just go along to get along. We'll just go along to just to be nice because, you know, we're nice people. Yeah, we are nice people. We're very polite. You know, call it the North American adage where we learn the American culture and we have the inherent British culture or the British or the British and French culture, the European culture, where you must show your manners at the table. You get yourself a smack upside the head where you must say please and thank you. Or you get a smack upside the head. So in that way, we're conditioned. But I'm not sitting there saying, you know, if you're at, uh, <laughs> at your friend's dinner table and he or she burps, I'm not saying you go cuff him upside the head. That'd be kind of funny, though, but I, I wouldn't do that. But I, I think you know what I'm getting at here, ladies and gentlemen. Enough of this deflection. We got to keep finding the truth, okay? We got to keep finding the truth in, in regards to all this garbage going on, all right? I can sit here and be angry about it all day, but no, I, I had a pretty good day. I had a short day at work, thankfully, but I'm not looking forward to having short days at work all the time. It's just the way the economy is going. You know, if there's not enough work for me to do at my job, then I get sent home. Okay. But needless to say, try to keep busy. Try to keep positive. Try to be focused. Focus on your marriage. Focus on your kids. Right? Focus on your dreams that are going to be beneficial for you and your family, if need be. Don't put your family on hold for your dreams. Don't ever do that. That can be very painful. Trust me, I know. Don't put anybody on hold for your dreams. All right? If they love you, they will back you up. If they believe in you, they'll back you up. It's that simple. If they don't believe in you, well, you got to believe in yourself and work that extra hard. Or work a little bit harder. So that's got anything to do with race. That's got anything to do with gender or your feelings. It's about... The way things are for some people, right? That's that's the thing. And we just got to do better. 
Question the carbon taxes. Question what's going on with this whole climate emergency BS too. People are constantly saying, oh, the fire's in Greece. Well, apparently they have found individuals that set those fires in Greece. Just like how they found individuals in Vancouver Island that were setting fires. And how our premier here in Alberta, Daniel Smith, is actually putting together a proper arson investigation team to figure out why all these fires just come out of nowhere. Because you and I both know, ladies and gentlemen, wood, deadfall, doesn't spontaneously combust. Yes, there is carelessness out there. Yes, there are people out there that have set fires. Right? So you got to find those culprits and punish them accordingly. But I'm not going to sit on my hands and panic and say the sky is falling when it's not. Yeah, July was pretty hot. Maybe it's a lesson. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. But I'm not going to panic and worry about it. And neither should you, ladies and gentlemen. Right? Neither should you. N neither should anybody. Because there's a lot of parts of this country that have seen record temperatures in the summer and record temperatures in the winter. So you got the best of both worlds. You got some great, hot, sexy summers and some cold, nasty fucking winters. But who am I? I'm not a climatologist. I'm not a scientist. What is the woman? What is the man? What does this all mean? I could ramble on and on about that. But who cares? Like I said, you know, this has been episode 221 of the Crusty Camp Podcast. This hoping JT separation, divorce, pink shirts, and more Barbie BS. And privacy and contradictions. So it's up to you to protect your privacy. Work a bit harder to do it. Uh, you and your partner, your wife, your girlfriend, boyfriend, whoever you lie with, okay? It's up to you too, or up yourself as an individual to make it happen. I protect my privacy the best of my ability, and I inquire. And I should talk to some online experts in the field, and they've recommended certain softwares and all that too. I can't mention the name because I don't have permission to. But needless to say, there are things out there that can help you protect your privacy, and people out there that can help you do it too, especially when it comes to protesting, expressing yourself as we should. And we look at bills C11, C18, and C36. That is going to stifle my expression, your expression, your friend's expression, and so on and so on and so on. Because the government thinks they can monopolize in everything we say. And they'll dictate which is Canadian content, which isn't Canadian content. Well, you decide, ladies and gentlemen. You know, is wearing this maple leaf on my head, serving my country for 20 years, and having all these flags behind me. Is it not Canadian enough? Am I not saying A enough for you? No, it doesn't matter. Everyone has the right to express themselves as far as I'm concerned, and so should you. Express yourself the best of your abilities just without hurting people and taking their stuff. It's that simple. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I am in Krusty Canuck on this Tuesday rant for 8th of August, 2023. I wish nothing but good things for you all. I wish the best. Uh, like I said, the weather's still getting warmer out here, especially in my area too. So hydrate, look after yourselves, you know, uh, try to do your best to eat right, and try to keep your chin up. I, I know it's uh, it's a bit of a cliche, um, but there are some trying times coming. And uh, like I say, we might be on the cusp of World War III. As much as I hate to say it, but it looks to be a reality. And when we look at these leaders who don't really give a crap about our services or our men and women that are willing to fight and die for this country, then it's up to you and I, ladies and gentlemen. You, your friends, your loved ones, my, my friends, my loved ones, and fellow veterans alike, to keep things afloat to the best of our abilities. Even though some of us have been put away to pasture and just we get ignored, tossed aside like we're nothing. Oh, you've done your part for your country. You've done this. Okay, you carry on. Shut up. All that other good shit. We will not shut up. We will not be quiet. We will not lie down. And we will not wait for glory. We won't. And neither should you. Like I say, ladies and gentlemen, I have been Krusty Canuck on this beautiful 8th of August, 2023. Like I say, I wish nothing but good things for you all out there. And do what you can to help each other in these trying times. Like I say, keep your chin up. You know, do some notable charity things. Give to a food bank if you can. Give some of your time uh, to those less fortunate. And just try to be a good, good human being. And like I always say, ladies and gentlemen, humanity and merit wins the day. Take care, and I'll probably see you Saturday. Bye for now. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. Yes, sir. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. 
This has been another episode of the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Stay sane and thank you for listening. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast.